When trying to build space stations, the cost and size of the structure is a major limiting factor. Launch vehicles are constrained in how big of an object they can fit within their fairings, and if you need multiple missions to assemble the structure, it'll be very expensive. Sierra Space is trying to solve this with an inflatable habitat named LIFE. LIFE stands for Large Integrated Flexible Environment and can expand to 27 feet or 8.2 meters when fully inflated. For months now, we've watched pressure tests on smaller test articles to ensure it can withstand the space environment. However, the company just announced that they are about to test a full-scale system for the first time. Specifically, next month in December at the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, they will push the unit to its limits. The test will consist of continually pressurizing the inflatable until it bursts, gathering data on its exact limits and constraints. Here we'll go more in-depth into this upcoming test, why it's so significant, the future of inflatable habitats, and more. Zero Space tweeted saying, Our team is preparing for the biggest ever burst test of our inflatable, expendable space station technology and NASA Marshall in December 2023. This will be a significant milestone for Orbital Reef in co-development with Blue Origin. This included an image of teams preparing. The plan is to use these large inflatable modules in conjunction with regular modules on the Orbital Reef station. Recently, there was some confusion as to the future of Orbital Reef and the partnership between Sierra Space and Blue Origin. The two companies have since cleared this up and commented that they are committed to a project with each other. Focusing back on life, Sierra Space announced yesterday that it's on the brink of a historic moment as the company prepares for its biggest ever burst test of Sierra Space's inflatable, expandable space station technology. In a statement, the company said, This groundbreaking endeavor marks a critical step in Sierra Space's co-development of Orbital Reef with Blue Origin, as the company plans to stress test for the first time in history a full-scale version of the life habitat structure and bring the unit to failure under pressure. The life module is constructed of high-strength soft goods materials, which are sewn in woven fabrics, primarily Vectron, that become rigid structures when pressurized in orbit. Up until now, Sierra Space has conducted five stress tests on subscale test articles. This next one will be 18 times larger, nearly 300 cubic meters of pressurized volume. This large jump in scale is what makes this upcoming test such a big deal. They go on to say that next month, the test is expected to provide Sierra Space and the Orbital Reef Program team with critical data in support of NASA's soft goods certification guidelines. The overpressurization to failure during the test is not only meant to demonstrate the habitat's capabilities, but also open avenues for structural enhancements. Sierra Space's inflatable space station module technology offers the absolute largest in-space pressurized volume, the best unit economics per on-orbit volume, and lowest launch and total operating costs, said Sierra Space CEO Tom Bice. Having the best unit economics positions Sierra Space as a category leader in microgravity research and product development, providing customers with the most attractive return on their investment, he said. In terms of progress, by now, all components and ground support equipment are in the integration phase at NASA Marshall Space Flight Center. Next, soft goods integration into the test stand will be followed by transportation, utilizing the NASA transporter tractor, to the historic testing location adjacent to the flame trench of the Saturn 1-1B test stand, where NASA tested rockets for the Apollo program. Next, setup and calibration of sensors and cameras alongside operational run-throughs will prepare for the full-scale UBP test in December. Sierra Space aims to further refine its technical approach to safety factors and structural integrity through this test. They highlight that insights from previous tests contribute to technical maturation and support of high-fidelity manufacturing processes. With the upcoming testing in mind, we can take a closer look at the exact design and plan with this technology. LIFE launches on a conventional rocket and inflates on orbit. The first product in the roadmap, LIFE 1.0, is a large three-story structure that is 27 feet in diameter. It's intended to sleep four astronauts, with additional room for science experiments, exercise equipment, a medical center, and Astro Garden system. This LIFE 1.0 model has 285 cubic meters of volume. However, there is also a plan for a LIFE 2.0 and even 3.0. Obviously, before Sierra Space makes these large inflatable structures, they need some success with the 1.0 variant. The way an inflatable structure can withstand the forces of space has to do with its unique materials and layers. First, you have the restraint layer for life, which is constructed of high-strength soft goods materials, which are sewn in woven fabrics, primarily Vectron, that become rigid structures when pressurized. Under normal operating pressure, the Vectron soft goods materials become five times stronger than steel, exceeding station lifetime performance safety factors. The restraint layer is complemented by a bladder, allowing controlled inflation and pressurization to ultimate burst pressure test failure. Two metallic blanking plates are strategically inserted into the restraint layer, designed for seamless integration into the structural shell with minimal performance degradation or knockdown. Planking plates are metal placeholders for integrating windows, airlocks, robotic arms, or other features into the soft goods layer. Together, this creates a structure strong enough to withstand micrometeoroid impacts and other projectiles. As partially mentioned before, 
The life habitat is currently being designed to support four crew members living and working on long-duration missions, such as those to Mars. Sierra Space highlights that it could comfortably house six for missions in LEO, but can accommodate 12 crew for shorter periods of time, such as those during which crew members transition. Because of its modular nature, additional habitats can be joined to each other to accommodate more crew, or for a variety of other purposes. The only main solid and non-inflatable component is a vestibule, which will be used to connect to other segments and leave or enter the habitat. Starting years ago, Sierra Space set up a full-size mock-up of the habitat, including interior furnishing, with various equipment that you would expect on an actual mission. Looking at an image of the second floor, you can see a crew work area with some computers and shelving. The floor and ceiling are also secured in place, likely using sectional pieces that can be launched in a compact format for assembly in space. While the main habitat is inflatable, practically everything you put in it is not. In another image, it shows off the company's Astro Garden near the access hatch. Finally, moving up to the third floor, a look at the crew living area and galley table shows off the impressive space available. Once in space, all of the air and water required to survive would be delivered by logistics carriers to the habitat, where it's then stored until needed. The life habitat has life support systems that regulate the air to maintain proper pressure, temperature, humidity, and oxygen levels. These life support systems recycle some of the air and water that is used to reduce the amount that has to be delivered to the habitat. For getting into space, it can even launch on the Space Launch System, or SLS, since it expands only after it's on orbit, making it easier and less expensive to transport. Once fully inflated, work would be done to outfit it with everything listed prior, making it a relatively massive habitat in space. Earlier this year in February, Sierra Space performed a month-long Accelerated Systematic Creep, or ASC, test on life, the first milestone in its 2023 testing campaign. Engineers loaded a one-third scale version of the inflatable habitat with a sustained amount of pressure over an extended period until it failed. Per NASA's recommended guidelines for inflatable soft goods certification, the test reached its goal of generating an additional data point, pressure and time to burst, which can be used to estimate the life of the primary pressure shell structure. Sean Buckley, Sierra Space Chief Engineer for LifeSet, our testing campaign has demonstrated that our life habitat pressure shell design has a predicted life of far greater than 60 years, or 525,600 hours, based on Sierra Space's 15-year on-orbit life requirement and the applied 4x safety factor. Now it's time to see similar tests but on a full-scale variant. Sierra Space is preparing for its most important life habitat test yet, expected to happen next month in December. This test will see the company push a full-size habitat to its limits until it explodes from the pressure. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.